Hi, welcome to this edition of Man Music Room. My name is Dan Blacksburg, and I'm here to introduce you to klezmer music. Klezmer music is music that originates from the Jewish people who trace their heritage back to Eastern Europe. Jews from that part of the world are often called Ashkenazi Jews, and music was a big part of their lives. There was religious music for praying in synagogue and at home, and wordless melodies meant to inspire mystical, spiritual energies. There were secular songs sung in the language of Yiddish, folk songs describing the recent events in the town, or a song from the Yiddish theater whose popularity was sweeping all across the Ashkenazi Jewish world. And there was lots of instrumental music that was played for dancing and listening, providing the soundtrack to the celebrations of the whole community. If there was a wedding or a coming of age ceremony, there would be klezmer music to get people to feel good. Before I continue, I'd like to give my heartfelt thanks to the Mann Center for the opportunity to share this music, which is both the music of my own heritage and music that I love to play and talk about. So let's explore a little bit of the journey that Klezmer has taken to get to where it is today. The term Klezmer comes from the combination of two Hebrew words, clay meaning vessel and zemer meaning song. So clay zemer, Klezmer, is a vessel of song. And in fact, the word klezmer used to refer to a person who played these kinds of melodies that we now call klezmer. Let's take a look at the journey of some of those kinds of musicians over the last hundred plus years. In the late 1800s into the early 1900s, many Ashkenazi Jews left their homes in Eastern Europe in lands that are today in countries like Poland, Ukraine, Romania, and Russia. Wherever they went, they brought their culture and especially their music with them. In the United States, Jewish people arrived and made their homes in cities like New York and Philadelphia and immediately started playing their music. In the U.S., the sound of the music changed to reflect the sounds of the musicians' new home. Influenced by American marching bands and the music that would soon become jazz, clarinets and trumpets became the star instruments and overshadowed the fiddles and other strings that were popular back in Eastern Europe. Some musicians found success playing American music and stopped playing klezmer altogether. The word klezmer in Yiddish, once a term for a knowledgeable musician who knew what to play for his or her community, became a negative term for an untrained musician who couldn't cut it in the new American music world. After World War II, Many Jews of Eastern European descent in the U.S. were allowed to take on more of a dominant white culture role in terms of jobs, education, and where they lived. During this time, many Jewish people moved quickly away from the music and the Yiddish language of their heritage. But almost as quickly, starting in the 1970s, young musicians began researching and playing old dance tunes and folk songs, and quickly once again brought them into a modern context. <laughs> In the past 40 years, klezmer music has grown beyond its original boundaries to become a globally beloved music that's loved by Jews and non-Jews alike. You can hear it today in concert halls and dance halls, at weddings, and at workshops all over the world, from New York to Canada, and festivals from Krakow to Japan. Before we play our final video, I just want to thank everybody, and especially the Mann Center, for giving me the opportunity to share this little overview of klezmer music with you all. And I also want to take this opportunity to wish you all a Lashana Tova, a Lashana Tova for Rosh Hashanah, the Jewish New Year. Lashana Tova means a good year. 
And in Yiddish we say a good year, a zis year, a sweet year, a good year. And so I wish everybody a really wonderful time as we enter this new season.